Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a fun, interactive Google Slides presentation that you can share with your students and they can use it for their weekly homework assignments. The whole week in one place with buttons, with images, with videos. So let's get started. <music> guys, I'm going to show you how to make a fun interactive slide deck in Google Slides that you can share with your students and they can work on it throughout the week. Um, I am not going to show you in this video how to make a Bitmoji scene like this. I have another tutorial that covers that. So if you're interested in making the Bitmoji scene, go to my tutorial called Make a Bitmoji Classroom Scene in Google Slides. Make your scene there and then come back and check out the rest of this tutorial. What I will show you is some really fun interactive stuff that you can do in slides. For example, add audio. Hey guys, here are your slides. Um, oh, by the way, right now we're in view only mode, so if you assign it to your students, as students can view, this is exactly what they'll see. I also have some videos in here. Hey guys, so this is a screencast explaining to the students exactly how the slide deck works. And I've color coded everything and made links so that if you click on Monday, it takes you right to the first slide for Monday. And you'll notice that Monday's yellow and the Monday slides are yellow. We've got some more video and audio. I've got a check for understanding here that takes you to a Google quiz so that um, you can check for understanding and get a response that students are working on this. And also here it says complete your work in Code Sculptor, and this is a link to Code Sculptor, and submit the link in Classroom. And this Classroom link will take you directly to the assignment in Classroom so students can turn their work in there. Um, and then it goes on to the next color-coded slide, which if you had clicked on the Tuesday button, you would have jumped right here. So just to give you some idea of what the different slides look like and some different features that we can add. We've got the bulletin board here, more audio on this one, another link to classroom. I've got some GIF stickers in here. And I'll just scroll through quickly so you can see some of the different um, things that I put in here. At the end I've got some fireworks and the last slide is a choice board that will take students to different activities and this is the embedded video here and there's links to all these activities. This is a link to a form where they can answer one question about the video just to show that they watched it. So that's what this slide presentation is going to look like so let's get started making some slides. Okay so I've already made the background that I want for this slide presentation as the first slide, but I don't want to use the original in my slides because I might want to change this later and use it in, in future slides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Download, PNG Image. That's going to download right to my computer, and then I'm going to start a new slide deck. So I'm going to go to File, New, presentation. And now in my new slides, uh, I'm going to clean up my workspace a little. I'm going to close out these themes. Don't need those. I am going to get rid of these speaker notes at the bottom. Press view and then uncheck show speaker notes. And then I'm going to click at the top of the screen and hold my mouse down and drag down until I highlight those text boxes and then just press delete. So now I want to set my background. So I'm going to click on background, choose image. I'm going to upload and I know that uh, I have a downloads folder that this is going to go directly to. So I select the most recent download and there it is. And now this can't be changed. It's all locked in because I downloaded it as an image. So it basically just took a picture of the slide. Now I need to take a second to title my presentation so I can find it later. And now I'm going to get started adding some interactive features to the slide. So first 
I'm going to insert an image, search the web, and I'm going to look for that little cartoon bubble. Uh, transparent cartoon bubble or thought bubble, something like that. As long as it's transparent, that's the key thing. So I'm going to put this right here. And it takes a second to create. And then I can get rid of this box on the side so I've got more space to work in. And then I'm just going to size it down and drag it from one of the corners. So it maintains the same ratio for width and height. And then I'm going to just drag it over here to my Bitmoji girl. And I don't mind that it goes a little off the slides. Um, and now I want to insert an audio file. But to do that, I need to make an audio file. So I'm going to go to a website called Vocaroo. Okay, so this is Vocaroo where you can record a quick and easy audio message. Hey guys, here's your slides for the week of May 11th. They're due on Friday. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so I, I pressed record, stopped my recording. Now I want to download it. So my downloads show right here at the bottom, and I know that they go into a folder called Downloads. So I'm going to go back into my drive, and I'm just going to drag this um, file into my drive, and it'll just take a second to upload. And here it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on this and press Share. And now I want to um, press Advanced. It says private, only you can access. So you want to press change. Anyone at your school district can find and access. And press save. So now anyone at my school district can find and view. You could also choose um, anyone at your school district who has the link can access. So actually, I'm going to go with that. So they have to have the link in order to access it. And then I'm going to press done. So let's go back to our slides and put in our audio. So now I'm going to press insert audio. And it's the most recent file. And it puts it in right over here. And so I'm just going to drag it to my thought bubble. And you can resize it if you want, make it a little bigger. And I use those red lines to line it up. There's some uh, format options over here. I leave it on the default, which is on click. So when people click it, they will hear the message. Hey guys, here you can also do automatically, but that's going to only automatically play when it's in presentation mode. And since I don't expect my students to have it in presentation mode, I'm not going to press automatically. So I can close out these format options. And the next thing I want to do is put in that arrow. So let's go to Shapes, Insert, Shape, Arrow. So it's right here. So it doesn't really matter which one you pick because we're going to change it anyway. And then once I select my arrow, I just put my mouse down and hold it down and drag it over until I get the arrow that I want. It's a little bit fat, so I'm going to just size it down a little bit. And now I need to do some um, formatting options. So I'm going to pick a fill color and make it red. And if you like the border like that, you can leave it. I think I'm going to get rid of the border, so I'm going to press that pen tool and then transparent. And now I want to rotate this arrow. So let me get to this top dot here and I can just rotate it right around. So I just clicked on that top dot and I got those crosshairs, pressed down, then just dragged it to where I want. So that's it for the first slide. We're all set. So now I'm going to add a new slide. And on my next slide, um, I am going to, first of all, erase these. So I just click down, drag down that box till it's highlighted, get rid of the text boxes. And I'm going to do a couple of things. One is, I want to um, put in a background. So let me see, background, color, let's pick that one. Okay, that's a little bit bright. And I actually really like this color in the background here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this extension I have called Colorzilla. Click on that and pick color from page. And now I just put my little crosshairs over um, the, the color I want. I can see on that bar on the top that it's the right color in the box. So I am going to click. And now the hexadecimal code for that color is copied to my clipboard. So when I go back to my new slide and pick background and pick color, now I can go down to custom. And in this box at the top where it says hex, I'm going to paste in the new hexadecimal code that I just copied. And hex is just a way to tell the computer exactly what color you want. So let's do that. And excellent. I like that color much better. And I'm going to duplicate this slide because I know I'm going to use this background color more than once. So I'm going to highlight the slide on the left and then press Command or Control D to duplicate the slide. So now back to my second slide. So make sure you're working on the right one. Um, I've got a couple things to do here. One is I want to insert an image. I'm going to search the web for a transparent TV. So let's see here. I like this one. So I'm going to put this over here. And that's good because it really is transparent. They aren't always. Make it a little bigger. I can always size it down if I want to. And what I did in the final slides is I made a screencast of how to use these slides, a little walkthrough for the students. Um, but I didn't want this screen blank in the screencast. So I came over here, it's back to the first slide, and I made a screenshot of it. So for a screenshot, okay, did my screenshot. And um, then I go back to my new slide, insert image, upload the, from the computer, and the screenshots on my computer go to my desktop. And now I just got to size it down. So this is like a placeholder for me. I put it in the TV so that when I do my video, my screencast of these slides, the TV is not blank, but later I'm going to go back and erase this. So um, the next thing I need is a box so to put the text in. So I'm going to insert shape. And I like this one. It's like a rectangle with rounded edges. And so I'm going to click to put that on my screen and then just resize it. And um, there's a couple things I want to do. I'm going to, um, I'm not going to pick the background color just yet, but I am going to change the borders. I like the border color being black, but I want it to be much thicker. Let's go with a three point border on that. And now I want to insert a text box. So you can either do it under the insert menu or you can just pick text box right here on the top. I'm going to put a text box inside here. Watch the video to see how to use these slides or something like that. And then I'm not a big fan of this font. I like source code code pro because it kind of looks computery and I'm a computer science teacher, but you can just choose what you like. And let's see how 18 fits in there. I'm just changing the size of the font. I like that. That looks like it fits well. So I'm going to just size my text box down a little and then drag it up. There we go. Okay. So that looks good. And like I said, I'm going to do my background color on this box later. Now I need to insert another arrow. So I'm going to insert shape arrows. And this time I want an arrow facing to the right. So I'm going to click to put that in. And I just clicked once on my screen and it puts it right in. Okay. Resize it a little bit, drag it up. Yeah, I like that. So now I'm going, a lot of this is just trial and error and seeing what you like. Um, so I'm going to go to the fill color 
and pick red just like my last one and go to the border color tool and pick transparent because I don't want a border on my um, on my arrow. Okay, so let's go to the next slide, which we already duplicated. So that was, um, so we've already got it set up. So now I'm going to put a text box at the top of the screen. And type in some directions. Click on the day of the week to go to the lesson of the day. Okay, and size this down a little bit. And then again, I'm going to change the font. So let me highlight everything. And also, if you want to highlight, you can also just click three times and that'll highlight everything. Um, I like bad script as a font because um, I like the handwriting look of it. Uh, I got that from an extension called Extensus Fonts, but that extension doesn't work in slides. So you have to go over to Docs and open it there and then find the font, copy it, and paste it back into slides, which is a little bit annoying. But the good thing is, is that once you do that once, then it shows up in your fonts in, um, in slides. So let me just make this bold so it really stands out. And I am going to center it on the page. So I'm going to go to Arrange, Center Horizontally. Excellent. So now I need to make my Day of the Week buttons. So I am going to go to insert, shape, and again, my favorite little rounded box, and um, just drag it out, make it a little bit bigger. So I want it to look like a button. There we go. And then I need to put a text box in here. I'm going to click on text box. and then type Monday. Um, and again, I'm going to use bad script as my font and make this a little bigger. Let's try 18, uh, maybe 24. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, and I might want to bold that to make it really stand out and then just size my text box down. Oh, size down a little too much. Okay, great. And then I'm going to right click on the word and, um, nope, that's not the menu I'm looking for. So no matter how many times you do this, you, um, might get, uh, you don't always find the right thing. So I'm going to, I want to center it. So I'm going to go to this, uh, alignment tool on the top and center it. And then I'm going to move this over. So it's in the middle of the button and just use those red grids to make sure you've really got it in the middle. I'm not going to fill in the color right now, which you'll see why in a minute I'm going to color code the slides, but I am going to duplicate this. So I'm going to highlight this text box and press command D a few times, control D if you're on a PC. So then I can just arrange all my buttons and I need six of them all together. So I've got my six buttons and again, just use those red lines to line everything up and arrange them how you want. Okay, that looks good. So I need to move this text box over just a little bit, get my little crosshairs. <clears throat> okay, that looks great. So now I'm going to go on to my next slide. This can have a blank background because this is my first Monday slide. So I want to make it my Monday color. So let me delete these text boxes. And then I'm going to go to insert image, search the web and transparent calendar. Okay. Let's see here. So those are an option for days of the week. Let's see, where did I find my transparent 
days of the week. Here we go. This is it. Okay, so I just drag this over into my slides. And here's a cool thing you can do is um, just double click on the box till it's got a gray bar and then drag it up and over and over. And now I've cropped it. So now I've only got the Monday sticker. So I can just put that over here and fill in my background color. So let me get rid of this on the side and I'm going to click on my slide so background comes up as an option. And now I want to pick a color. So let's pick a yellow. Whoa. So I've got a couple problems here. One, the yellow is a little too much. And the other is this Monday sticker is not really transparent. So I need to fix that. So I'm going to press Command Z. Uh, that undoes whatever you last did or Control Z to get rid of that yellow. So what I want to do now is press File, Download, PNG Image. So again, I'm just downloading a PNG and it'll just do this one slide. And now I'm going to go to remove.bg. It's a great website that removes the background of anything, of any image. I'm going to upload image and it should be in my downloads right at the top. It takes a second and then it just gets rid of your um, background, which is great. So it just downloaded when I clicked it or you can just press this download button and then I go back to my slides. Let me get rid of this and um, insert image. And to get rid of that, I just clicked on it so it was highlighted and pressed delete. Um, and now I'm going to upload from computer. And it's the top one where it says BG, uh, remove BG preview. That's the one I want. Okay, great. So this is perfect. But now I need to just crop it down because this I don't want this box to be so big. So I double click on the box itself till it becomes gray. And then just drag everything down. And there we go. That's perfect. So to get my background color, I want it to go with this yellow, this kind of gold color. So I'm going to use my Colorzilla picker again. So I'm going to pick Colors Colorzilla and then pick color from page and then just hover over this yellow till it shows up in the banner at the top and click on that. So now when I go to background color, I can go to custom and um, just paste in the hex code that I just copied. And then I don't want it to be matching. So I just want to drag this down till I get to a lighter yellow. That looks good. And you can see right here, you get a little preview of the color. Great. I like that a lot better. It's not too, not too much on the eyes. Okay. So what do we need to put on our first Monday slide? Well, before I put anything, actually, I do want to duplicate this slide a couple times so that I have some Monday slides. I'll need probably three or four Monday slides and I don't want to go through all that again. So I'm going to click on the slide on the left and press command D maybe three times or control D depending on what kind of computer you're on. Okay. So let me go back to my first Monday slide and I am going to put in a box. So insert image. Oh, no. Insert shape. And it's my rounded corners box is up here on the top. So I'm going to just click on my slide to insert that and make it a little bigger. Move it over a little. Okay. So now I need a text box in there. So you can see once you get the hang of these tools, you're using a lot of the same tools over and over again. In fact, if you wanted to, you could even go up to this text box and just copy it, highlight it, and copy it and paste it into your other slide so that you don't have to redo the text box and the formatting and all that. So um, watch this video and then go to the next slide for a coding example. I teach high school computer science, so this is a computer science lesson. Um, obviously, you tailor it to whatever you, whatever you teach. 
So I'm going to go back to that source code pro and that size wise that actually looks pretty good for the um, text, but I know I'm going to want to put an audio clip in there. So um, I would size it down a little bit. I've already showed you how to do the audio clip, so I'm not going to go through that again. You just do the same thing. Um, and next I need to put in a video. So I am going to first insert an image because I want to frame around my video. Search the web. Transparent frame. And this one looks good. Sometimes they're not truly transparent, even when you search for transparent, but good, this one is. Okay, so we can size this down a little bit. And I just, it just moved me to the next slide because I got too close to the edge. So, um, and then I'm gonna close this out for more workspace. And now I need to go find the video I want to insert. So I'm gonna do insert video by URL and I need to find the video. Okay, so here's the video I wanna use. So I'm gonna click share and copy. And then I go back to my slides and just paste that URL right here and that's it. And you could also search um, on YouTube right from here. I like to get the specific video because I don't always remember the exact titles and select. And there we go, our video's right here. Just drag it into my frame. And this is why I haven't picked the color background for any of my text, for any of my boxes yet, because I like this kind of aqua color. So I'm gonna use my color picker and pick color from page. And I'm gonna pick one of these aqua tones over here in the video. I like that one. So I'm gonna click on that. And now, let me get it rid of this format options box. Now I'm gonna click on this box on the shape itself and go to fill color, custom, and just paste in my hex code. And there we go, I like that much better and it goes nicely with the, um, with the yellow too. So now, um, I want to put in an arrow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Jiffy and I just typed in a search for arrow stickers and this is what it gave me. So you can choose whatever you like. You can, you'll can you see later in the slideshow I use this one. I like these stickers. This is the one I'm looking for. So I'm gonna to go to this link and it just automatically copied to the keyboard. So now let me go back to my slides and I'm gonna insert image by URL. And there we go, that's the arrow that I want. It's gonna to need to be sized down a little bit. So let me just drag it from the corner. And I actually wanna drag this down a little bit, I think. Oh, I just dragged down the text box. I wanna drag down the whole shape. So you could either Command Z there and redo the whole thing or just drag down the rectangle. And then I'm just gonna bring this over here. And then you can just play around with, the, with where things are. I would you know, play with this layout a little bit, but it's pretty much what I want it to be. So let's move on to the next slide. So in the next slide, um, it's actually all things that I've shown you before. I have on the next slide a desk and let's see transparent I don't like the way these are facing so I want to do I want something facing forward let's see here nope the desk I'm looking for isn't here so let me just try transparent desk again. Okay, this'll work. So what I want is something to put my monitor on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna crop this one way down. 
because I just wanted at the bottom of my screen to hold the computer monitor image that I'm going to put in. And then transparent, um, you could put TV, monitor, computer. Let's, let's see what we get here. I think this is the one that I used. Yeah, that looks good. So um, it was this or something very similar to this. So then you can just put this right on top and um, just size it. And then to put whatever you want in here, um, I just took a screenshot of some of an example I wanted to put in here. So you could put a text box in the screen. You could put a um, you could put a screenshot of some work from another page. If you were going to put a text box, what I would do first is do insert shape, and then just pick a rectangle and just click on the screen to put it in, and then just make a white rectangle so that it looks like a screen. And um, and then just type and then just put a text box in there. So let's see what other new things. Oh, let's do another slide for um, the Bitmojis. So on this next slide, I had the words check for understanding, and then I had a box on the side with some text over here. It just had text. It was a box and audio. So I'm not going to show you all that because we've done that before. So let's go to the Bitmoji extension. And one cool thing about the Bitmoji extension is you can put in any words that you want and they'll put them over a Bitmoji. So I want check for understanding. Make sure you don't have any typos though. Check for understanding. Okay, and the other cool thing is if you don't like any of these, I'm actually gonna try this one. going to drag and drop it. It was just loading, so it's taking a minute. Um, if you don't like any of these, the cool thing is if you go back to the extension and do it again, it will um, give you different options. So you can just kind of play with it. Oh, let's see what's going on here. Let's try it again. That seemed like it was taking too long. It seemed like something was going wrong. So that's the beauty of technology. Okay, so check for understanding. So let's use, these are both yellow and they, they might not go with what we're doing. So let's try this one. Check for understanding. And, and that just showed you that does exactly, that these are different options every time. So what I wanna do is I want to um, use these words, but not that Bitmoji picture. So I'm going to crop this. So I'm gonna double click on the edge, crop, oh, crop it down. And now I've just got the words and a little part of my head, but that's easy enough to get rid of. Insert image, oh, nope, insert shape. And any shape will do, but because it's kind of rounded, I'm gonna go with a circle. And I'm gonna insert the circle big enough to cover my head. And now uh, for the circle, I'm gonna get rid of the border, transparent, and I'm gonna use a fill color. And you can see under custom, the fill colors I've already put the hexadecimal code in are already here. So the yellow for the background's right here. So I don't have to do that again. I can just click on that. And now that's disappeared. So I can use the Bitmoji font and words without using the Bitmoji. And in fact, you can use a different Bitmoji. So let's see, kind of, kind of mix and match. So if you find one, that you like, you just put it right under there. Size it down a little bit, and there you go. Um, now, if I wanted to put you know a box with text on here, what I can do is go back to a previous slide and highlight not this is highlighting the text box. I want to highlight the whole thing. And I want to press Command or Control C to copy, then come back to this slide and pre and then paste it right in here. So I have my shape, and um, I can also copy my text as well. 
actually I don't want to copy the text itself. What I want to do is copy the text box. So let me highlight this text box and press Command C and Command V or Control as the case may be. I'm on a Mac obviously. And now you can just change this text so that um, so that uh, it's it's the right text for the slide without reformatting everything. And what I did was um, I had the text I do understand what we have learned today. Click here to find out. And then I have a um, Google quiz that I made. So I'm going to go to my drive and find that Google quiz that I made. And here it is. So I'm going to open this up. Oh, I opened it twice. Only needed it once. Okay. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to check my settings and make sure it has collect email addresses, um, restrict to my district, and limit to one response. So those are really important settings for me because if I forget to put a name field in, which I actually did forget with this quiz, collect email addresses tells me who did it. So now I'm going to press send and then go to the link icon and just press copy. I'm going to go back to my slides and highlight the words click link and then just insert a link and it'll take me right to my Google quiz. Now I don't like that font so I'm going to highlight this or not the font the color. I'm going to make it black and then in my walkthrough video I just tell them everything underlined is a link and play with the size of this this um, box, you know, I would make a lot bigger and I'd make the text a lot bigger and play with the font size. Uh, but that's easy enough to do. You just click on it, drag it, make it bigger, make your text box bigger, change your font size. Um, and that's easy enough to do so that it looks better on the page. Okay, so let's see what we've got next. Um, so the on the next slide, I have some images of, you know, I give them the work, the problem, but the important thing here is I have a box. I'm going to drag. I just put my cursor at the top over this box and drag over it so that I can copy both the shape and the text box. I'm going to press control C, go to the next slide and press control V. And now in the text box here, I'm going to tell them how to, um, how to do their work. Complete your work in Code Sculptor. That's a site we use to do our coding in. And submit the link in Classroom. So this is a really cool thing. So, um, I am going to highlight the word classroom or you could highlight the word submit, whatever you want, and press link. And now I'm going to go to my Google Classroom and I'm going to grab the link directly to that assignment so the kids will be directed right there. So let me go into my class, go to classwork, and on the three dots right next to the assignment, I am going to press copy link. And now when I go back, I'm just going to paste that link in and apply. And again, I'm going to make it black. So I press the A for the text color and black. Oh, didn't quite make it all the way. So the other thing you can do is do the um, little paint roller, highlight some text that has the formatting you want, and then roll the paint roller over. Oh. Command Z, that didn't work out. Okay, let me just change the color of that C. Okay, great. So now you can see this link takes you directly to the assignment in Google Classroom, which is great, super easy for the kids. 
So let's see what other features in these slides um, are really useful. Um, so after this, I had one more Monday slide, which tells them that Monday's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this last slide. So again, I click it on the left, Command D, and then on the new slide, I can just get rid of this stuff, highlight it, just drag my mouse over it, and then I want to resize this Monday sticker, put it in the middle, and then I put a text box under it. Monday is complete. You can put good job or whatever. Um, so I'm going to go to my fonts again. Again, I'm going to use bad script and size it way up. So let me just highlight the number. Let's try 30. Yeah, 30 looks good, and I'm going to bold it for some emphasis. In fact, you know what? I think I want it bigger. Let's try 48. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, the background's a little boring, though. So I'm going to go to background, choose image, and go to Google image search. And let's try something fun, confetti. Okay, let's try this one. See how it looks. So that looks great, but the problem is, is, is that um, I wanted the yellow still in the background. Okay, so let's set the background. So let's go to background and color. And we're gonna pick our custom color. And now I want to insert an image over it. So let me search the web. Um, transparent confetti is a search term that I used. And I am going to put that in here and just size it so it fits the whole screen. Let me get rid of this on the right. And then just fix it down here. Okay, that's great, but I don't want the confetti on front because it's covering the words. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click somewhere on the slide um, where it's just on the confetti and pick order and send to back. And now the sticker, the Monday sticker and the words are on the front. And now I'm gonna um, use a Bitmoji. Let's see, great job. This is the one that I used in mine. I like this one, killing it. And then just put it over here. And I kind of like it when it's like a little bit off. Um, but again, personal preference, you can play with it. So that's it for Monday. So then they go on to Tuesday and um, you repeat the same process where you have a new slide. Um, I'm going to pick a new slide and you get the Tuesday sticker, pick a color according to that. Um, there are a couple other things that I used in this slideshow. Um, on one slide, I used a bulletin board. So whatever your background color is for that day. Let's see. I'm just gonna keep it the same one, but you know, this is it would be whatever day you're doing this on. Um, you would go to insert, image, search the web, transparent bulletin board. And that's it. And you just pick whatever bulletin board you like. I like this one, but I don't like the push pins on the side. So I just double click it to get that crop window, crop those out, double click again, and then just size my bulletin board accordingly. And then I did transparent post it. And then I just drag and drop my post it right onto my bulletin board. And size it down and throw a text box on there. And that's it. That's so that's easy enough to do. Um, so let's see what other features I want to go over with you guys. Oh, one thing is the choice board at the end. So that one's a lot of fun. Um, the Go to a new slide, drag and drop to get rid of these, and pick your background color. 
And then for the text at the top, I did insert word art choice board. And it shows up like this. And then I would just fill in with, um, for a fill color, I would pick the same color I have in the background. Um, but then I would uh, go back and do custom. And so now that I have it on this color already, I can look at the options that kind of go with it and just drag my cursor around until I find a color I like and um, go with that. You can change the thickness of the black line around the um, letters if you like. And um, insert a text box to give directions. And then I, let's see, we'll just put the text box here. Um, and then see, looking for more work. Okay, and then I would change the font and all that. And then I'm going to insert some shapes. So I'm going to insert a shape and click on my screen to just insert that shape and make it the size that I want. I know I want three of them, but I want to get this one set up first before I duplicate. So first I want to change the thickness of the border. I'm going to do an eight point. I want a nice thick border. Um, and I want to change the color of that border. So let's go with green on that one and put a text box in and whatever else you want. So I'm going to duplicate this. And you might, I might need to size these up and play around with them because this looks a little empty on the screen. So maybe I'll make these a little bigger. Um, and then if I want to make sure that they're all exactly the same size, I would just duplicate again. I just highlighted the, uh, the ones on the screen and, and press delete. Okay, that looks good. And Command D again. And play around with them, get them the right size. And now I can just change the border color on these. So that makes it a lot easier. And then um, what I did for to make the boxes was I just inserted an image. Um, let's see, insert transparent dance party. And I just scrolled through till I found one that I liked. I like this one for the colors. Size it down. And fit it right in there. And then you can, uh, it's a little big. Um, and then you can also put a text box in at the bottom. <clears throat> and you need to play around with that, get it centered and all that. But that's just a little trial and error. So um, let me get rid of this on the side. And I'm going to size down this text box. Code a dance party. Okay, so the cool thing here is whatever link I'm going to put in, I can either make the, um, the image into a link. So you just pick any image and click insert link and put the link right here. And then the image is a clickable link. Or you could do the words. So either way that you prefer, you can put the link in. So that's cool. So that's it's as easy as that to make a choice board. So um, another thing that I want to show you is how to link these buttons. So Monday slide is slide four, the first slide. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to pick this same yellow background. So I'm going to go onto my button here. And I'm going to go to fill color and pick under my custom colors that yellow for Monday. And then I'm going to highlight the shape. And so we're doing the same thing that I just talked about. We're making this shape into a link. So I'm going to insert link. But rather than putting a URL, I'm going to pick slides in this presentation. 
and slide four is the first Monday slide. So now when they press on the Monday, they go directly to slide four. So that's a pretty cool thing and you can do that for all of the days of the week. I had all the days of the week plus the choice board um, and I put all the colors. So whatever Tuesday's color was for the background, that's that button. Whatever Wednesday's color was, that's that button. Um, and oh, for my last slide on Friday, I put all the days of the week and um, I put some fireworks in there. So that was a cool background. So let's just go over that real quick and let's go to um, insert background and I chose the color and maybe it was a light blue. So let's say that day was a light blue. I would lighten that blue up, but you get the idea. And I put all the days of the week on there and then I will. so in Jiffy I just search for fireworks and pick the ones that I like copy the URL go back to my slide insert an image go back to my slide insert an image by URL and just paste that right in there that I just copied from Jiffy so it takes a second and then we're just going to press insert when it's done. So this is how I got the fireworks as a background on one of my slides. And that's it. And then it's way too big down here, so I'll just resize it up. Okay, so I'm all done working on my slides and I'm ready to assign them to my students. So I'm going to press classwork on the top and then I'm going to press create. For this, I'm going to select Material. Material is automatically view only, and there's no Submit button. And there's nothing in these slides that they need to submit through Classroom, except for the links that I've already given them. So I'm going to give it a title, and whatever instructions or description you want to give it. And then I'm going to select the slides to attach from my drive. And they're right here, since we just recently worked on them. And now I can under four it says this class and I could select other classes so I could assign it to more than one class on the all students tab this will automatically assign it to all my students but if I just wanted to choose selected students I could click on this and do that here and under topic I'm going to organize it under unit two I can either press post and send it and post it right now or I can press the drop down and schedule it for later so that's it. If I wanted to post it tomorrow morning, I could schedule it for tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And so that's it. If I forgot anything or if there's any topics that you want me to cover, drop it in the comments. Have fun making your interactive slides.